Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of BA Select Start Base. I am back here today with another episode. We're going to be talking about once again WWE 2K20. Unfortunately, today Dan the Man is not with me. Uh, it is that busy time of year where it's, you know, the holidays and people are working and schedules are a little bit more harder to accommodate. But nonetheless, I just thought I'd, since I have the time, I'd give everyone my personal review of WWE 2K20 and maybe somewhere down the line, probably after the new year, uh, Dan and I can finally sit down and the both of us can discuss it. Now, Dan the man has gotten his hands on the game a little bit more earlier than I have. He essentially got it at release because he had pre-ordered it. He wanted to get, you know, all the DLC and all the content that came along with it. I chose to go the Black Friday route when it's half off because a lot of the pre-order content didn't necessarily appeal to me. Um, there were a few things here and there that I wouldn't mind getting, but I just thought from a financial perspective that I should hang off on it. And it's, it's actually kind of tradition at this point because since WWE 2K14, I've been waiting since Black Friday to get, you know, these games for half off, which is actually a really good deal because a month after a new game comes out, you're able to get it for half off. But... Nonetheless, you know, before I got the game, Dan, you know, gave his review as much as he could. He talked about exhibition mode and my career and, you know, creating your own superstar. And there were a lot of things that he sort of had to conceal and not reveal because I still hadn't gotten my hands on the game yet. But over the last three weeks or so, I've been playing WWE 2K20. Essentially, since Thanksgiving, I've been playing WWE 2K20. And, you know, I had seen, we had seen all the reviews that had come out where everybody was saying it's a glitch fest, it's absolutely horrible, do not spend your money on it. You know, Dan and myself at the end of the day, we're wrestling fans. So if a new video game comes out on the block, no matter how bad it is, we still want to try it. We want to find out for ourselves, you know. And I'm actually glad that I did because I'm going to give you guys my honest opinion about what I experienced, what I think of each mode, what I think of the game overall. So here we go. Now, I got to be honest with you guys, you know, the funny thing is buying the game, bringing it home, putting it into the console. I was actually feeling a bit nervous about it. I actually talked to Dan, you know, and... He said, uh, it's okay, you know, when I when he played it, it really wasn't that bad. But the whole time when I was, you know, installing the game and waiting for it to start, I was kind of taking what everybody had said into consideration. I was thinking to myself and I'm like, I don't know about this one, you know. And because to be very honest and to be very frank, every single year it seems like the same thing is said. I almost feel like half the people who play a 2K game will almost tell you, you know what, if you have last year's game, just stick to that game. Don't buy this one because it's almost or essentially the same thing. And then when the next game comes out, they go, oh, you know what, don't buy this one. Just stick to the last one because it's essentially the same thing. But I was always one of those people where, like I said before, I need to try something out for myself. I need to experience it firsthand. I need to get my hands on it to, to see what all the talk is about. So... I put the WWE 2K20 in, it installed, I open it up, and you know, at first all the prompts and the instructions are popping up all over the place, and um, the, the, the new patch update was, you know, installing, and it said it was going to take several hours, and I was like, you know what, I just want to jump in, so um, I... You know, I started off fairly easy. Well, at first I went to the options uh, menu and I, you know, messed around with a few things and, you know, adjusted it to how I like it. Went into exhibition mode. I said, okay, just for the sake of trying to learn the controls, let me just start with a regular one-on-one -on -one match on normal mode. So I was Adam Cole and I was going against um, Johnny Gargano. And um, I could tell you, like... The glitches that I've been encountering are not exactly the ones that you see on the internet now. You know, a lot of people, their superstar is sinking through the ring or the ropes are, you know, wobbling all over the place or the ref is, you know, melted from, you know, the waist down or, you know, objects, you know, just, just are flying, you know, all over the place. I never really encountered those glitches. I encountered more of the, the smaller things. So, for example, the first glitch that I encountered was... 
again, I was Adam Cole and I'm walking down to the ring and I noticed that, hey, wait a second, both of his knee pads are missing. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I know for a fact that's not his default attire. Adam Cole always wears knee pads. So when it cut from his entrance to uh, my opponent's entrance and, you know, before my opponent comes out, there, you know, it, it showed um, a, a shot of Adam Cole and he had his knee pads all of a sudden. So that was the first glitch that I encountered. There is a lot of glitches with the audio, like the ring announcer sometimes will go, you know, making his way to the ring, weighing 230 pounds, and then it just cuts off. Like there's no more, like it doesn't say who it is, it just it says the weight, and you know, it cuts off. Sometimes even the commentary too, they'll be saying something and it cuts off. Um, I experienced a lot of that in my career mode where either there was no reaction to something or the ring announcer would say something wrong like I forget what it was you know I think you know somewhere in the game I won the WWE championship and it said uh here is your winner and the new United States champion and in my mind I'm like wait I was just I just won the WWE championship not the United States championship so a lot of things in that aspect are essentially broken or aren't functioning correctly so I played a few matches and the game crashed on me right now. There, It's crashed on me a total of uh, three times, I believe. Um, I have probably played the game for about 50 hours, roughly. Um, and if it's crashing, like usually a lot of that time was dictated towards doing the showcase mode and the my career mode. But, you know, everybody, like, made it out to be, like, this game crashes, like, once every 10 minutes, which kind of scared me a bit, because I'm thinking, okay, at any second now, this game is going to crash, um, which sucks, because if you're having, like, this five-star match, and all of a sudden the game crashes, it, you know, it kind of kills it, you know, you don't get a, a definitive winner. So I tried a few exhibition matches, uh, you know, some of them were one-on-one, -on -one, some of them were, um, you know, eight-man battle royals, I'm very big on that. And the game, you know, it was functioning. I just felt like the the new controls, you know, are highly unnecessary. Um, honestly, you know, they should have had an option to just go back to the to the old controllers. You know, if someone is picking up a wrestling game for the first time in years, yeah, you could have that new control scheme. But I would say it's always good to have the option, you know, to have the old control scheme and, you know, for you to be able to switch to it. Kind of like how, you know, for submission mini games, it gives you the option, do you want the circle mini game or do you want the button mashing, you know? So it, it's like, if you can have options on that, why can't we have options on, you know, the new, the new or old control scheme? So that honestly kind of irritated me. It kind of like took me out of the, the game, you know, was that new control scheme. Like you can get used to it, but some of the, like to do a, to do a comeback, Let's say you're laying on the floor and, and you want to do a comeback. So you have to press, I believe, three buttons to do like to, to do a kip up to, you know, so that you can get your comeback. I think it's R2, uh, square and X. So you do that and now you have a comeback. And if you actually want to initiate the comeback, you have to press uh, square and X one, one more time. So you're a set, you essentially have to press five buttons to do a comeback, which is, is, per, is like, that's profuse. That's a lot. That's, you know, I, I would draw the line at two, like, you know, at, like in the old days, triangle to, you know, get your comeback, triangle to initiate the comeback. You know, when you have four or five buttons, that's a little too much. Um, so that was a big pain in the neck and, uh, you know, like to do a, a chain grapple moves or, um, limb target moves. Again, you have to press like four or five buttons, you know, um, buttons that you would only, you know, like moves that you would do with only one button in 2k19, you have to do with several buttons now. Um, it's, it's too much, like it's too much of a change. It's too much of a shift, you know, like if we if we had the option to once again switch back and forth, I'd be like, okay, you know, if I ever want to challenge or if I want to change something, you know, in the game, it would be good to have this. I've heard that a lot of people call this like, you know, a desperate call by 2K to change the controller so that, you know, the game feels different. Um, uh, so there's that. That really bugged me about the game. Like, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I play now here and there and, you know, I'm, I, I've become accustomed to pressing triangle to reverse, but... 
I think that the old control scheme is a hundred times more efficient, uh, more clean, more well put together. Um, this one is just, it's too much. It's too much to remember. It's too much to do. Um, half the times I find myself doing the same move because I'm still trying to figure out, wait, how do I do this again? How do I do that again? Um, so then I think inevitably the next thing to talk about is the my career mode. I really wanted to jump into this because I had heard all the mixed reviews. I had hear people saying, you know what, this spans, you know, a, a very, you know, uh, expandable story. On the other side, I heard that, you know, the writing is bad and that, you know, the the, the characters are, are very dislikable or are not likable at all, uh, you know, um, are detestable. Um, so... You know, I went to create my both superstars. So I, I created my female superstar. Then when I went to create my male superstar, the game actually crashed on me. Great. So I restart the game. And, you know, thankfully, my female, my player was saved. I just had to create the male, my player. And once again, this is a very, very big problem is we need to stop with the whole thing of limiting, you know, all the items that you can use to create your my player. You know, you get limited to only a couple of pieces of clothing, um, only a couple of hairstyles. If you want the other ones, you have to spend your um, uh, purchasable, you know, your VC points to unlock those. Um, and it's kind of like, really? Like, why can't we just have everything at our disposal, you know? And honestly, if there ever is a 2K21, because at this point... Um, at this point in time, there's a lot of rumors going around that, you know, the budget has been cut for 2K21, that pe that people in, in the 2K, you know, are, are quitting. So there's a lot of turmoil going on surrounding 2K21 already. But if there is a 2K21 or for a future wrestling game, I think it's about time that we stop the whole thing of, oh, you're going to be a rookie and you're going to come in through, you know, the trenches and you're going to work your way up. We've been seeing that for a couple of years now, and honestly, like, you know, it, it's it's the same thing, just just told in a, in a different form. You know, at first in two K sixteen, you know, you start in NXT, and you know your coach is Bill Demont, and you know you have to work your way through that. In two K seventeen and eighteen, you know, um, Matt Bloom was your coach, and you're in NXT, and you have to work your way up. You know. In 2K19, you know, that's where they kind of had fun with it. You know, there was uh, Baron Blade and Cole Quinn and B and BCW. Uh, it, it told a much more interesting and intimate story, you know, as you would climb your way up with twists and turns along the way. This year, once again, that's what they're doing is, you know, instead of one person this time, it's two friends, Trey and Red. Um, you know, Red is kind of, I guess, you know, the highlight of the two. Uh, she's usually the one who gets the attention, who kind of gets people talking. Um, Trey is kind of, you know, like the goofball, you know, the class clown who's always, you know, if he gets something done, it's done by a fluke or, you know, it's done in a very, you know, laughable way. You can't take the guy seriously. So there's that dynamic of the two. And, and honestly, I... I was much more a fan of Red, you know, I felt like I could relate to her character, especially with her mean streak, you know, I feel like that was kind of her character. Um, honestly, I'm going to be honest, I very much enjoyed um, career, uh, or um, yeah, uh, you know, the my player, the my career mode. Um, everybody wants to, you know, crap on the writing, well, I got to be honest with you all, I don't think that you ever buy a wrestling game you know, for the storytelling in regards to a my career mode, you know, you, you like if, if you're buying, you know, a, a, a wrestling game and you want it to have the same writing as maybe like, you know, um, Uncharted or, you know, The Last of Us or, you know, uh, Detroit Become Human or, you know, any of those selected titles, you know, you're kind of, you know, putting up very high standards for, you know, a, a, a mediocre, you know, storytelling mode. Um, this story, you know, I, I kind of liked the concept because it was new. It wasn't just, oh, you know, we both go to NXT. We have to prove ourselves. The second we prove ourselves, we go to the main roster. We both win, you know, the main championship for, you know, each respected gender. Story concludes, credits roll. Okay, now we're back into exhibition mode. Um, you know, 
I feel like this time around, I liked, you know, like the little uh, swerve, you know, um, I just felt like, you know, so spoiler alert, I'm going to be talking about some of the characters. So Brooklyn Von Braun kind of becomes, uh, you know, the main uh, antagonist for the entire story. Um, I just felt like, you know, the ending for me didn't do justice because it almost felt like 95% of career mode was Brooklyn Von Braun getting the better of you no matter what decision you made. And that last 5% was, you know, Red or Trey getting the better of Brooklyn Von Braun. They do a good job of making her such a detestable character, Brooklyn Von Braun. And I feel like if you make a character that detestable, like there needs to be a big payoff at the end. There has to be this climactic moment. And I just felt like the way that it was assembled, it was kind of like, you know, shattering, you know, the hopes of the player. But at the very last minute, sneaking in, you know, a last minute resort way of getting out of it and, you know, getting revenge. So that part of it kind of sucked. I was kind of hoping for like this big climactic, you know, um, like, you know, match or stare down between um, Red and, you know, Brooklyn Von Braun. But it just kind of became this like this running nat like gag of like, oh, she's going to humiliate you. She's going to get the better of you. You're going to maybe get one over on her, but that's it. She's going to like, you know, get you for the rest of the story. With that said, um, honestly, the rest of my career was fun. Like, all the little unlockables they throw at you, some of them are very, very goofy. Other ones, you know, um, are kind of like Easter eggs. Like, for example, Cole Quinn becomes a, a guy that you unlock, and it's kind of a throwback to last year, 2K19. And I think that that's a really good idea is that, you know, as the series goes on, the 2K series goes on, if you continue developing these custom characters... To where in the future, like, you kind of have, like, a separate roster where it's all these fictitious characters, you know. It's um, Riley Flash, it's Baron Blade, it's Cole Quinn, you know, Ribby even. You know, to have all these make-believe characters who really don't exist in the real wrestling world is kind of a treat. Um, so, personally, I enjoyed my career mode. Um, were there moments where it was glitchy? Yes, there were. There were actually moments where I heard, like... There was this one cutscene, and I don't know if this was if this was like voiceover narration or or what it was supposed to be, but there's this one cutscene where Ronda Rousey is talking like incoherently to someone or something, and you hear uh Trey's voice. And I was so confused, and there were even certain moments where, let's say, for example, there's a part where you know new the new day kind of get intertwined into your story. And Becky Lynch and her crew of, you know, people are by the ramp. And there were moments where, you know, it would show the new day, but you would hear like, you know, you would see Kofi Kingston with the microphone in his hand, but you would hear Trey talking. And then when Kofi would put the microphone down and then when Trey would start talking, you know, it would be Kofi's voice. So I think that like the the audio and the video of the cutscene were maybe not in sync or so, like something happened where it was thrown off. So I encountered a few of those glitches. Um, but overall, all of that aside, I personally enjoyed my career mode. There are a few little uh, twists and turns along the way where it's like, okay, I see what they did there or where they mentioned something, you know, that's kind of a throwback to something else. So... In all honesty, in my personal opinion, my career mode, um, like, I enjoyed it. I would go back and play it again because there are a few different places where you are given an option of what you want to do. And when they were advertising the game, it said, oh, you know, branching my career mode. If you select a different option, something, you know, the outcome is going to be different. So... There's that. And then, you know, I went back into exhibition mode for a second and, you know, I played a few more matches. Um, and then I went into the to the showcase mode, which this year was the story of the four horsewomen. And honestly, first of all, so there's 15 matches in total. Literally for every single match, to my recollection, you have anywhere from 10 to 15 tasks that you need to complete. These things could range from get so-and-so's body to yellow or get so-and-so's body to red. Hit, you know, um, a power bomb or hit this move 
or do a chain grapple or do a signature move or do a finisher pin so and so irish whip so and so um and there literally came to a point where granted this is what i've always said that it needs to be you know is that they integrated a heavy amount of cutscenes. like for the sasha banks and charlotte flair hell in a cell match Literally, I think you spend more time watching a cutscene than you do playing the actual match. Which, in a way, is cool because I feel like if you're going to do a showcase mode at least, um, like allow for the player to experience it rather than having to play every single mini section of the game. Now, I gotta be honest with everyone. Showcase was a, a mode where I really wasn't looking forward to it. As a matter of fact, the whole time I'm like, let's just do this just to get it out of the way. I just wanted to experience it. I wanted to unlock, you know, all of the hidden characters and all the arenas. Um, I pretty much got through all of them on my first try. There was, I think, just one match where I, I literally, like, someone was pinning someone else. I was stuck in the rollout minigame. And I get up, and by the time I get into the ring and run to break up the pin, like, the referee's hand was already coming down for the three count. So if I had, like, an extra half second, I would have been able to save the match. But, like, also the last match, I gotta warn everybody. I don't think everybody's gonna get through it on their first try because it's tedious. There's a lot to do. It's a lot of, you know, um, you know, mini tasks that you have to complete to move forward to the next section of the match. Um, I just feel like it, it's it's like it's one of those one and done deals where it's like you do it and that's it. You never really go back to it. Um, and that's not just, you know, the four horsewomen showcase, like even for the Daniel Bryan uh, showcase mode last year. I played it one time and I just like kind of put it aside and I I never went back to it. I not I think I I one time went back to one match. And that was it. I never touched it again. I never got the urge to replay it. It was it, like it's just it's there, you know? You can pop into it anytime you want, but it's like okay, you kind of already know what's going to happen. And if not, you can go to the network and just find the match from that night and just watch it. I've said it for a long time. We need to stop with this whole thing of taking matches, segments, moments, feuds from the past in real life and putting it into the video game world, putting it into the virtual world and replaying it and just watching cutscenes. Um I would much rather that they take out showcase and, you know, like spend time making exhibition mode a lot more polished. Which brings me to exhibition mode. Um, and, you know, I honestly, I don't know. Like, anybody who's followed, you know, the BA Select Start series ever since Dan and I, you know, started off the first episode. For those of you who are avid listeners, you guys know that I've been talking about, you know, purchasing the SmackDown 20th Anniversary Pack just so that I can finally play, you know, as Hulk Hogan. And I gotta be honest with you guys, uh, the SmackDown 10th Anniversary Pack was released a few days ago, and I still have not downloaded it, not because I haven't had time, not because I don't have funds, like, you know, I've got money in my PSN wallet, but the funny thing is, I think about it, I'm like, I don't see myself playing this game all that much. As a matter of fact, there's a big part of me where for the first time in years, wants to go back to the to the predecessor to 2k19 and just play that and just be happy with that because 2k19 felt like a much more cleaner well-rounded polished game 2k20 feels like it's always you know just one step you know behind like there are so many moments where you counter a move and you could you could have sworn that you countered it on time but it doesn't counter some of the moves are wonky, the gameplay is a bit wonky, like characters who just drift, you know, to different parts of the ring, you know, like, incoherently for no reason, um, it doesn't, like, it, it feels broken, you know, and, I, like, that's the one part that I can say, like, I, I get what people are saying now, the game feels broken, because guess what, it is broken, I've also, uh, jumped into the creation suite, you know, anyone that knows I've, I've talked about this, you know, the creative superstar, uh, you know, it, aka, you know, custom threads. 
Um, I've been able to put custom gear on a few people. Um, however, I encountered one thing. So anytime when you go to do the menu screen pose, if you select the entrance attire and set a screen pose, it's not going to save. You have to instead select the ring attire and set the menu screen pose like that and, and it'll save. Once again, a small little thing that's broken in the game. Um, you know, uh, I went and I wanted to give John Cena, you know, a, a vintage look. You know, I go to fix his hat and his hat is bleeding right through his head. Um, some of the items clip through, you know, the the body of the wrestler. Um, so that's the part. And, you know, yes, I did try out the Jeff Hardy um, sleeve. And, uh, yeah, like, you know, your character just gets this, you know, coordinated, you know, um, their, their arms have arms, essentially, like their head, you know, plops up. Um, it's horrible. Um, so the creation suite, the funny thing is I created my superstar and I'm, I gotta be honest with everyone. Usually every single year, you know, when you create your superstar, then you get the urge to create their moveset then you get the urge to create their entrance and their victory scene. So you kind of set all these things for your character. This year, I literally created my character, like the uh, appearance. And he like my created character now is just like he's just sitting there, you know, like I have no aspiration or no like need of going and giving him the moveset that I want to give him, giving him an entrance giving him a victory scene. Um like there I just I really don't want to I don't want to do that, you know. I don't feel the urge to to go and, you know, try out those modes and kind of, you know, give my, you know, created wrestler, you know, personalize him and give him the look that I want to give him. And I think a large part of that comes because, you know, the core fundamentals of the game being exhibition mode, you know, is not fixed. Um, never mind showcase, never mind my career, when you just want to have a one-on-one -on -one match. Um, so far, I can tell you, like, there's been maybe two or three matches where it's like, you know what, that was a pretty cool match. You know, there was a lot of back and forth. I hit two finishers, they kicked out. They hit a finisher, I kicked out. Which, by the way, that's another thing as well. The pin system feels off. Like, you know, I feel like in 2K19, it was much more smooth. Let's see, I'm trying to think. Like, that's another thing too, you know? Like, last year for 2K19, you know, uh, if you wanted to unlock all the wrestlers without buying the Accelerator Pack, you could play, you know, the 2K Towers. Which was fun, I guess. It was kind of a lot of work to do, but I eventually did it and I was able to unlock every single person on the roster. But this year, once again, I just, I unlocked all the legends that I, that I essentially wanted to unlock because uh, when you start off, they give you 30,000 VC points. You complete career mode, you get more VC points. And when you complete showcase mode, you get, I think, 5,000 VC points. So I had all, like, I had like 94,000 VC points. And I was like, okay, let me spend it on the people that, like, I want to spend it on. Like the Austins and the Rocks and the Goldbergs and the Undertakers. Um, and then, like, once again, I didn't have that urge to play 2K Towers. Because I'm like, I really don't want to play. I don't care if I do or do not unlock everybody. You know, um, like, I even started playing the Roman Reigns, you know, 2K Tower. I literally started the first match and I turned it off and I was like, this is, this is boring. Like, I really don't want to do this, you know? Um, and I think that's, that's where the game suffers is that 2K continuously, like glitches aside, you know, gameplay aside, when you start implementing things that you have already implemented in the past, you know, like the whole showcase thing, you've been doing real life recreated stuff since WWE 13. You know, you've been doing, you know, like this is the second year now that you're doing, you know, a, you know, a 2K tower, which last year was fun because the gameplay was, you know, on point, you know, there was different types of, you know, stuff that you could do this year. It's like, okay, well the gameplay, you know, is not good. I have to go through 10 or 12 matches, you know, you know, to to complete the tower. 
and it's like I just I didn't want to do it like I I had no motivation I had no reason to do so I was like eh whatever you know if I get it I get it if I don't I don't so I mean pretty much if you're still with me on this episode you kind of get like what what my overall um, consensus and thoughts are about 2k20 I will just say this 2k20 is probably going to go down as a very low point in like the wrestling game, you know, timeline. When you chronologically look at everything, it's like, okay, your No Mercy was a high point. SmackDown vs. Raw 2010 was a high point. WWE 13 and 2K14 were high points. Then you're going to have your low points, you know, the, the 2K15s and the 2K20s. Um, I just feel like the game is broken. I mean... Yeah, we got two patches, but I got to warn everybody, I don't really feel like that did a whole lot. Um, You know, apparently we're going to get more patches. Um, You know, again, like for a guy who had been waiting literally like for about a year, you know, just to play as Hulk Hogan in, in the next 2K game. It's like I have the opportunity to buy the and it's only $9.99, you know, so it's not really expensive. But it's like I think about it I'm like okay I already spent 30 bucks on this game I'm I'm considering spending another 10 bucks so that brings me up to 40 bucks 40 bucks on a game that is not even you know it's not even fully complete it's not even finished a lot of stuff is broken is out of place a lot of stuff has been taken out or is missing um just so many things where I'm like like that was another thing too. Like you know, people would tell me, "Oh, you cannot alter, you cannot alter face paint." So I go and I I go to Sting, and that was another thing too. I don't know why they took out current Sting. Like you know, the the two thousand, um, uh, fifteen edition of Sting. You know, when he had just come into the WWE, um, they took that version out and they only gave us Surfer Sting from the early nineties and Crow Sting late nineties. And so, you know, I go to alter his face paint. I'm like, oh, no, like you actually you you can, you know, alter his face paint. So I go to alter his face paint on his ring attire. When I go to alter his face paint on entrance attire, it doesn't give me the ability to do so. So I had changed his face paint from the white, you know, face paint to the to the like the wolf pack, the red. But the problem is, since I cannot alter his entrance face paint, when he comes down to the ring, he has white face paint, and then when he's wrestling, he's got red face paint. So it's like, there are small things where, like, the game give, puts you in a place of disconnect, where it takes you out of, like, you know, the the smooth gameplay, where it's like, wait a second, that's broken, that's not working properly, the announcer just cut off, you know, this didn't work, you know, that didn't, you know, happen on time, so... I mean, I don't know, 2K, I think at this point, 2K20 is probably, like, no matter how many put patches that they put up, it's probably still going to be a semi-broken game by the time, you know, they, they decide to move forward. Um, Personally, I'm glad I experienced it because I like to experience things firsthand. I still play it here and there, but I got to be honest, I think I'm probably going to go back to 2K19 sometime very soon. Just because, you know, that's a game where all my progress is there, all my alternate attires are there, my created superstar is there with his full move set functioning, you know, I just, and you know, that's another thing too, like a lot of people were taken out from 2K19, which doesn't make any sense to me, and 2K tries to like do cash grabs, you know, like in 2K18, you could play as Mankind. You know, and then in 2K19, they take them out. And then in 2K20, oh, you want to play as Mankind? Well, you have to buy the SmackDown edition or you have to pay $9.99 and buy the SmackDown pack. Like, it's such a ripoff that you have people pay to play as a character that they could have played just two years ago. And now all of a sudden, oh, you have to pay to play as them again. Like, it's so unfair. There is no structure. There really, really isn't, you know. And, oh... One other thing where it's like they don't they don't polish up the game. They don't go back and, you know, tune certain things. 
So for those of you who are very familiar with unlocking like all the legends, you all know that in previous years, you would have to spend 8,000 VC points to unlock Goldberg. Now, usually maximum, you would have to spend 5,000 to unlock any legend, you know? So, but the thing with Goldberg is that they gave you two different attires. So essentially, when you kind of break it down, it's like you get 4,000 for, you spend 4,000 for one attire for Goldberg, then you spend the other 4,000 for the att other attire. So in total, it's 8,000 VC points. So this year, sure enough, I go to the unlockable screen and I go to Goldberg and it's like, oh, okay, he, he's still at 8,000. So I'm thinking, you know, I'm spending 8,000 VC points to unlock Goldberg you know, two attires. So I literally, I, 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 I unlock Goldberg, I go to the main menu, I select Goldberg, and shockingly, he only has one attire. So what they did was, is that they left the VC point value of the two attires of Goldberg from the previous games. This time around, they took away one attire, only gave you one attire, and still had you p spend um, 8,000 VC points to get one version of Goldberg. So once again, it's a case of copy and paste from uh, past games without paying attention to detail, without tweaking things. Um, now, there are a few things that 2K did correctly, ironically. I know that's going to sound weird for me to say. It's like, wait, in a semi-broken game, how did they get anything right? There are a few things that they did get right. You know, um, you know they have, you know, um, the, the dual uh, people's elbow with Mankind and the Rock. You know, Hulk Hogan's moveset is one of the most complete, you know, with his comeback, the leg drop and all that. His victory scene is on point. Um, there's actually a, there's two things that they fixed this year. So one thing was in previous years when you would do a tag team move with your partner, who like in a regular tag team match, when you would do a tag team move, it was backwards. And finally this year they fixed that. You know when you tag your partner and he comes in, you guys do the 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 tag team move correctly. You know how they would do it in real life. A second thing that they fixed that I was actually hoping they would was that let's say if you pick apart the announce table or, you know, there is um, broken, you know, stuff around the arena. When you would go to reach for a weapon underneath the ring and you would pull it out, all of the broken stuff at ringside would all of a sudden just disappear. And that would kind of t like take me away, like that would take me out of the match because it's like, you know... When the arena looks destroyed, like, it seems like you've had a grueling match. And thankfully this year, they fixed that where if there's, you know, carnage all around the ring, if you reach for a weapon underneath the ring and you pull it out, all of that, you know, carnage still remains around the ring. So that was a plus. Honestly, other than that, like, some of the moves actually look very, very good. Um, the the one arm trap tombstone power driver looks awesome. Um, uh, I'm trying to think, you know, the seven star Lariat looks absolutely good. Um, you know, uh, everything, just every, like some of those moves, like, you know, have been tuned, have, you know, they look good. Um, other moves like the stone cold stunner still look bad. Um, or, you know, recycled animations from like 10 years ago, like Booker T scissors kick. It's like, okay, you know, please update this. You know, it, like, it doesn't hurt to update it. It really, really doesn't. Um, but, yeah, you know, with, 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 with all this said, I just, you know, it's it's okay, you know. It, it, let me bring it down to this. So, I'm guessing, like, you know, to, to kind of wrap it all up. If you have 2K19, I would say stick to 2K19. Because 2K20, it limits you, it restricts you, it makes everything a bit more harder to do. Um, I know there's that, uh, there's that appeal where it's, oh, it's a new video game. It's, it's what came after 2K19. And it gets very easy to get, you know, stuck in that. But take it from me, someone who's taken the time to purchase it, to, to be patient and purchase it, and to play the game... And I was actually hoping that at this point in time, we would get, you know, a few more patches and actually have the game fixed. But, you know, 
2K just, you know, they they stir the pot by telling you, you know, um, oh, you know, it's Friday, you know, tell us who you like to play as in the, in the in, you know, 2K20. And when you go to the comments section, immediately there's everybody, you know, bashing in, you know, the game and going, hey, 2K, how about you fix your game so that we can actually play as, you know, our favorite superstars. So my final review for 2K20 would have to be that the only time that I really, really enjoyed the game was in the My Career mode. Again, you I was restricted because you have a limited moveset. And that was another thing too. Like the, the My Player tree was a lot more easier to comprehend this year. It was a lot more clean and polished. However, you know, you still finish with an 83. Which is not bad, compa- like, because when you compare it to last year, you know, you would finish my career mode as the WWE champion at like a 64. Um, so there's been a big jump in improvement there. So I will give 2K that. But other than the, the career mode, showcase mode is whatever. Like, if you don't play, you're really not missing anything at all. Um, the 2K towers, like, I couldn't even... I literally I was um one minute in and I and I quit out of it. Um core gameplay is 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 all over the place, you know, there are there is generic stuff that should be fixed and you know finited and is not. Is instead it's wrecked, it's broken, it's semi done. Um there were literally moments in the game where let's say, you know, if I was, you know, again, one of my favorite things is to, you know, give, you know, the superstars alternate attires. So I selected the Ultimate Warrior and I went and I I tried to give him like his WrestleMania 6 look. And I noticed that I would put the tassels on, you know, like, you know, the ones that I wanted. I would go and try to put his his um armbands on and I would put those on. And I noticed that the tassels would actually change or they would disappear. And it's like when you try to change one part of the attire, the other part either completely disappears or it changes. Let's say if I selected, you know, red tassels and I would go to give him, you know, um, armbands, the, the red tassels would all of a sudden change to blue. And it's like, wait a second, I didn't, I didn't select that color, you know. So it almost seems like when you try to fix one thing, one, another thing kind of gets broken or kind of, you know, um, get, you know, is bugged. There you go, guys. Uh, another uh, edition of BA Select Start, you know, concluded. Uh, save your progress and do not turn off the console. I'll catch you guys next time.